Use geometric probability to estimate pi. We're at 10.6c. There's 13 previous videos for Chapter 10. 10.6a and b are linked in the description along with the geometry playlist if you need it. Geometric probability is a form of theoretical probability that is determined by a ratio of geometric measures such as lengths, angles, areas, or volumes, and it's used when an experiment has an infinite number of outcomes, like the experiment we're about to do. We're going to use geometric probability to estimate the value of pi. So I've made a grid here, and the squares in the grid are the same width as the diameter of a penny. So a penny is 0.75 inches across, three quarters of an inch, or it's 19.05 millimeters. I've got four boxes coming down and six going across. I'm going to toss a penny onto this grid. We toss a penny onto the grid 20 times. We're going to let X represent the number of times the penny lands touching or covering an intersection of two grid lines. So this penny is touching or covering this intersection right here. See that? I'm going to pick it up and throw it again. We're going to do that a total of 20 times. So the penny on the top would count because it's touching or covering an intersection. This one would not count because it's not touching or covering an intersection. For the penny to touch or cover an intersection, the center of the penny can land anywhere in these blue shaded regions. So one square right here would be one square right here. So we have four of them. And if the center of the penny lands anywhere where these blue shaded regions are, it'll count. Now notice that each shaded corner is one fourth of a circle. My drawing's not perfect, but you know what I'm trying to do. Together, the shaded corners have an area of pi r squared. The radius is right here, isn't it? And it's right here, and it's right here. The area of each square would be 4 r squared. Now that's a lot of area. So the probability is going to be high that our penny is going to land touching or covering an intersection. And the probability of the center of the penny landing in a shaded area would be pi r squared over 4 r squared. These cancel out as a 1, don't they? So we just have pi over 4. Once we've thrown our penny 20 times and we've counted how many times it has landed touching or covering an intersection out of the 20, we use this formula to estimate pi. It's going to be four times the quotient of x and 20. So if the penny landed on or touched an intersection 16 times out of the 20, we would do four times the quotient of 16 and 20. That would be four times four fifths, which would be 16 fifths, which is 3.2. So we'd be saying pi is approximately 3.2. And that's pretty close. If it landed touching or covering an intersection 15 times, we'd get approximately 3 for pi. 14 times out of the 20, we'd get approximately 2.8. That's getting a little far away from its actual approximate value, isn't it? If we did it 18 times out of 20, it would be three po approximately 3.6. The more we toss the coin and run this experiment, then average the results of the estimates, the more accurate the estimate will become. So let's say we threw it 20 times and we got the 3.2 to estimate pi, then we got a 3, then we got a 2.8, then we got a 3.6, and we kept doing it. We find the average, if you remember, by taking our amounts, adding them up, and then dividing them by how many we added together, how many add-ins there were. So we'd have 12.6 divided by 4, which says pi is approximately 3.15, which is really close to the approximation of pi. And the more we do it, the better our estimate will become. 
In the formula, pi is approximately 4 times the quotient of x and 20, works for this experiment to estimate pi because the probability is the quotient of pi and 4. So 4 times the probability is pi. So that's it for chapter 10. We're going to move on to chapter 11, which is all about spatial reasoning. I'm going to start talking about solid geometry and three-dimensional figures in 11.1. .1. The second part of that lesson is classify and identify three-dimensional figures from a net. Then we're going to finish 11.1 .1 with cross-sections of three-dimensional figures. If you're following along with me in the Holt High School Geometry textbook, you can do this penny experiment with the grid on page 725. You can also try making your own grid four down and six across the width of the coin, okay? And do it 20 times and then use our pi is approximately four times the quotient of x and 20. And the, remember the 20 stands for how many times you're tossing that coin, okay? See how many times you can count it touching or covering an intersection and see what you come up with for an estimate for pi. I hope you have a great day. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.